in your warehouse stock number of extra tons to be added number of extra tons to be added on each pool on each pool to compensate to compensate the magnetization to compensate the magnetization due to brush shift due to brush shift in a shunt generator in a shunt generator APD by P by ISH. These are the terms. For a series generator, it will be IA. Right on? There on. In a shunt generator R, this one. For series generator R, this one. You know. flux see flux won't come simply flux comes with ampere terms only if you are seeing flux at the front and at the back and what is the ampere terms so this armature flux is represented by ampere terms what are those means this right now next point the total armature ampere terms the total armature ampere terms which produce armature flux which produce armature flux so in the name itself there is an answer only to remember this armature ampere terms let us say z number of conductors are there in the armature. How many turns are there? These are turns. What is the current flowing in those turns? If I is the armature current? I am in the armature ampere turns per pole. I A by A to z by 2. We have written already one thing like this. The conductors lying in the region O, A, B, O, C, D are doing demagnetization. The rest are doing cross magnetization. Now, if you are asked, how many are cross magnetizing ampere turns per pole? What do we say? Keep the subheading cross magnetizing ampere turns per pole. Cross magnetizing ampere turns per pole. Per pole means how many electrical degrees? 180. Out of 180 under the pole, there is 2 theta demagnetization. What is the rest? 180 minus 2 theta. 
three times is also in electrical degrees. If top is electrical, bottom is also everything is electrical. So 180 minus 2 theta is cross magnetizing region per pole. And what are the ampere terms now? Say I A Z by A two. Listen. Previously, you have written when press shift is zero, theta is zero, phi d is phi d is 0, do you remember that? And phi c is phi a, phi c is phi a, this is phi a. Can we say that? What is this? Representing armature flux. What is this representing? Phi d. What is this? Phi c. Now, let us consider there is no pressure shift in the machine. Theta is 0. What is this value? 0. What is this value? I A Z by A to P. Right? So nothing but let us say pressures are shifted 90 degrees electrical. Pressures are shifted 90 degrees electrical. What is this? 180 by 180. 1. All the flux, armature flux is demagnetizing in nature. 90 if you substitute 180 minus 180. Zero. I will make you to solve a problem at the last. I will give you mechanical degrees, I will give you electrical degrees, how to solve the problem, we will see at the last. Keep the heading. Other effects of armature reaction. Other effects of armature reaction. Another the first one is you know two basic effects. One is demagnetization, other one is cross magnetization. In demagnetization, again there are two types. One demagnetization is naturally occurring due to magnetic saturation. That is one thing. And what is other demagnetization? When you shift the brush to improve computation, means due to cross magnetization, when you shift the brush to improve computation, again there is one more. Demagnetization. So there are two demagnetization. Remember that. And there is no cross magnetization. What is doing normally? Apart from these two, there is there are some some effects, miscellaneous effects. You need to remember them. Number first one is decrease in the efficiency. Efficiency decreases. The reason is due to increased iron loss. You know, iron loss is already what are they? They depend on flux density. Iron loss are proportional to what? Flux density. Eddy current loss is proportional to V max square. Hysteresis loss is proportional to V max square. What is by any flux density? Now, if the flux is uniformly distributed on the armature, one vapor flux uniformly distributed, same one vapor flux is concentrated here. What is the flux density? What happened to the flux density? In this the flux density is less, in this the flux density is more. Same one vapor flux only. Due to density, due to increase the flux density, when the pore cuts this flux, when the pore portion cuts this flux, in the pore the iron losses are less. When the pore portion cuts this more densified flux, in the pore the iron losses will increase. This is one thing which will definitely affect the iron loss, but generally we take it as negligible. Generally what we say, iron losses are constant losses. Yes or no? We say iron losses are constant losses, but with load, if you are strictly asked, definitely with load, armature reaction is coming and with load, what are varying? Iron losses are varying in this equation, but we generally neglect it. Make a note. Due to increased flux density, 
due to increased flux density and from the cold tips. Iron losses increase. As you know, due to armature reaction, the commutation will not become successful. So if there exists any sparking, then this spark will always <coughs> destroy the brush surface. The brush surface and the commutator surface will have a good mechanical condition. So any spark occurs. What is the spark current flowing through A? If you observe a spark and a normal fire between these two, there is a lot of difference. Spark has enormous temperatures in it. High temperatures. Arc welding, welding constant. It's spark only there will be doing all those things. Normal fire has not that much of a temperature, but spark has high temperature. So when spark comes under the pressure of the concrete, definitely it will, it will damage the fresh surface. Some bitterning, blackening, all those things comes into picture. So automatically the brush surface becomes rough. So what you have to do, regularly you have to maintain, you have to repair, you have to replace the brushes and everything should be done. Otherwise, this roughness in the brush surface will automatically encourage sparking. Due to sparking, right now. Due to sparking, the brush surface gets damaged. The brush surface gets damaged. Which needs which needs regular maintenance and repair. Third one is increased design cost. Increased design cost. In order to compensate, in order to compensate R major reaction effect, in order to compensate R major reaction effect, the design cost increases. reaction and its effects. Methods to reduce are made of reaction and its effects.
You know, the coal is also made up of steel laminations as well as yoke also. Yoke as well as coal. Along with the armature, they are made up of laminations. We have written in the notes like this. When the DC machines are operating at the power electronic converter, circuits or devices, the yoke should be laminated. Remember that? Similarly, poles are also laminated. Why we do laminations? To reduce anti currents. Why anti currents are coming into picture? Because the armature rotates, it will cut the flux, EMF is reduced in the armature. So, armature core should be laminated. Is the pole rotating? Is the yoke rotating? Is it cutting many flux? No. What is the flux flowing through the pole, flowing through the yoke? What is the flux flowing through the yoke? It is pi by 2. Is it time varying flux or time invarying flux? Time invarying flux. What is the flux passing through the yoke? Pi. Is it time varying or time invarying? Time invarying. So will it link with the stationary conductor? No. When it doesn't link with any stationary conductor, no voltage, no AT current. But still, you have to laminate it. The reason is, particularly when it is specified power electronic converter circuits, See, the power system is completely standardized into AC. There is no DC power system now. Generation, transmission, utilization, everything distribution is in AC only. Now, there is AC supply available. If you want a DC, you have to again rectify it using power electronic converters. Now, these power electronic devices which are not linear, definitely they will offer some ripple content. So, when there is some ripple content, let me any small ripple content, not at all ideal, you won't get any ideal. So some small ripple content in the DC voltage, this is pure DC only but with small ripple content, will produce some variation in the current as well as variation in the flux. When flux varies, automatically it has a property called linking. When the flux varies, automatically it will link. When this varying flux, small variations are there in the yoke and in the pole core, automatically it link with this and what it will produce again? Voltage and AT currents. That's why to eliminate them, you have to, all the reset machines are also yoke as well as pole cores are also laminated. Apart from that, if you see the pole shoe, if you see the pole shoe especially, pole shoe has more cross-sectional area when compared to pole core. So, more cross-sectional area will encourage anti currents. Will encourage anti currents. So, in this anti currents are more. Apart from that, under the pole shoe and between the armature core, the air gap is not so ideally uniform. There is 1 mm air gap only, but if you think ideally it is that 1 mm is not so smooth. Why? Because on the armature, what are they? Slots. In that conductors are there. So, the flux distribution in the air gap is not so smooth, so you will be having some variations. So, those variations may cause some again in the currents by leaking. That's why pole shoe is more sensitive, particularly when it comes to iron loss, as well as pole core, as well as yoke. Everything should be laminated. Now, these laminations, what is pole stacking means? Take one lamination, cut it into one half, and this lamination has other half. So like that, let us imagine there are ten laminations. These are ten half. These are ten halves. Let it be A. Let this be B. Now, you keep one on the other alternately. You keep A first. On that, keep B. You will have one more A, one more B, one more A, one more B, like that if you keep them. What will be the structure? Just imagine what happens. You are making one on the other. So pole core becomes solid. Pole core becomes solid. But imagine uh, A has left projection, B has right projection. Again A has left projection, B has right projection. So, under the pole shoe, if you observe, 
you will have one left projection, one right projection, right or wrong. You will get like that. Under the pole shoe, if you observe, one left, one right. Again, one left, one right. So, what you are doing, one, one on the other, if you place, but there is A, there is left projection. On that, there is B, right projection. If there is right projection, is there any left projection? No, there is a space now. So, what is this space? What is this air gap doing? It is producing reluctance under the pole tips. It is producing reluctance under the pole tips. Why you are going for this particular construction means, you have just discussed that there is deflux density increased under the pole tips. So, the increased flux density need to be reduced to reduce the air loss. Then, how to reduce the flux density under the pole tips? By only offering the reluctance. If the reluctance is offered under the pole tips, then automatically flux density will reduce. Reduce flux density but not flux. Reduce flux density but not flux. Is the point clear? Reduce flux density, but not flux. Flux should be same, density should not be there. Means what I have to do now? Flux should be same, you have to you have to increase the area, length of the air gap. So, by increasing length of the air gap, net the reluctance in the machine is increasing. Yes or no? By increasing length of the air gap under the pole, means under the pole you are offering some air gaps now, introducing some air gap. So this air gap is nothing but reluctance. If the net reluctance in the machine is increasing to maintain the flux, you require more MMF, yes or no? So the design cost will increase. It requires more MMF, definitely, in order to uh, make the flux to flow through high reluctance, as well as the flux density under the pole tips got reduced considerably, and automatically the iron losses will reduce to maintain the efficiency. Right now. Poles are also made up of steel laminations. Poles are also made up of steel laminations. Each lamination, each lamination is made into two halves. Each lamination is made into two halves and stacked together and stacked together to get alternate projections and stacked together to get alternate projections. This will introduce high reluctance pole tips. This will introduce high reluctance pole tips. In order to reduce flux density, in order to reduce flux density and iron loss. But the net reluctance in the machine increased. But the net reluctance in the machine increased. Which demands more MMF.
Fourth chamfrage is a process which is similar in both AC generator and DC generator, but the purpose of pole chamfering is totally different in both cases. Pole chamfering means maintain minimum reluctance in the center of the pole along the polar axis and as you go towards the pole tips, reluctance will increase, absorb. Reluctance means air gap. Air gap is minimum, air gap is maximum. Right? Huh? Air gap is minimum, air gap is maximum. This is armature, this is pole, DC machine, stator, rotor. In AC generator, rotor, stator. On the stator, what is there? Winding. On the rotor, what is there? Pole. If you observe, center of the pole, minimum reluctance. If you go towards the pole tip, reluctance is increasing. We are doing pole chamfering here in order to make the flux distribution sinusoidal and to improve the shape of the waveform. We are more concerned about harmonics. We are more concerned about sinusoidal voltages in AC generator. But we have nothing to do with harmonics in DC generator. Pole chamfering is not for that in a DC generator. Pole chamfering is to reduce armature reaction effect in a DC generator. See here, this is high reluctance voltage. So, due to the increased reluctance, in this voltage, automatically the flux density will reduce. This concept is similar to this concept only. Both are same. Here you are introducing the reluctance by, by stacking alternate projections under the pole. Here, the pole is normal only, not pole stacking is not there. But the diameter of the pole core, this one pole R, is more than that of the armature. If you see the circumference of this one, the diameter of this is more than that of the armature. By designing properly like this, you can maintain minimum reluctance at the center of the pole and increase the reluctance towards the pole tips. This will automatically reduce the flux density as well as iron loss. But, but again, what is the concept? The net reluctance in the machine will increase. It demands more MMM. Same concept. Right now. Minimum reluctance, minimum reluctance at the center of the pole, minimum reluctance at the center of the pole, an increased reluctance towards, an increased reluctance towards pole tips increased reluctance towards pole tips the concept is similar to above case make a note that in bracket the concept is similar to the above case Armature flux is generally concentric surface under the north pole. You see, these all are clockwise surfaces like this going on the armature. So when it passes through the pole, in order to reduce the flux, in order to reduce the flux, you just introduce some air gaps in the pole core by slotting the pole core. Introduce some air gap. So in this air gap, when the flux want to pass through this, these air gaps will offer reluctance and automatically they will reduce some amount of armature flux. All the problem is due to armature flux. So when you offer some reluctance to this armature flux, automatically some amount of armature flux gets 
reduced and some problem can be reduced to some extent. Right? So pole course slotting. If you observe this is the pole core, there will be rectangular slots arranged in the pole core to introduce area. Telling now. The pole core is the pole core is also slotted. The pole core is also slotted to introduce air gaps. to introduce air gaps which offers reluctance which offers reluctance to R major flux to R major flux and reduces it and reduces it to some extent. And now comes the important part, compensative winding. Reduces armature flux to some extent. Let us consider this is the pole core. In the pole core, we have cut into air gaps. Instead of solid pole core, cut into air gaps. When R major flux, flux is constant acceptance always. When R major flux is passing like this, when some air gaps offer some reluctance to R major flux, automatically the flux will reduce. In order to reduce flux, you can offer some reluctance. So, to some part of the R major flux, this air gap will offer reluctance and reduces. The problem is due to R major flux. If you reduce some part of R major flux automatically, R major reaction is to some extent reduced.
नहीं कर रहा था तो इसको कैसे बनाया पर ऐसा नहीं है कि सर लिसन बोले और सब सुनने लगा Consider large machines, particularly big generators and big motors, which are running at high speed, which is having high current in the armature. Especially, the current is varying. Load varies according to time, like that. When the load varies, what happens to the armature current? Varies. What happens to armature flux? Now came varying flux. Is the point clear? If the armature current is constant or low, the flux on the armature is constant. If the armature current varies, what happens to armature flux? Vary. In magnitude is varying. So what will the varying flux do? What is the nature of varying flux? It leans. It leans. That's the same thing happening on the armature. Especially when the DC machines are large in size, operating at higher and higher speeds, particularly operating with varying loads. The armature flux on the armature is going to vary. The varying flux links with the armature conductors and produces induced EMF. That is not the wanted one, unwanted EMF. EMF is induced due to main flux. That is what we require. But these unwanted induced EMF in the parallel paths will produce circulating currents. Yes or no? This induced EMF in the parallel paths, it is not that the same in all the paths. So this induced EMF, unwanted induced EMF in the parallel paths may produce circulating current. Circulating current may interfere with commutation. Now, when they interfere with commutation, they will produce a spark. But especially these are high machines, large jet machines, large machines with high speeds. When the machine is running with higher and higher speed, with high current rating, there is a chance of spark definitely spread onto the segments. So under the pressures, the spark spreads. It will, the spreading of spark will form a flash over. The spreading of spark will form a flash over, like a short circuit ring on the commutator and totally damages the armature winding. So, especially large generating machines running at high speeds, operating under varying load conditions, compensating winding is essential. Otherwise, simply flash over comes into picture. Why? Because 
This varying armature flux due to varying loads will link with the conductors produced as they reduce DMF and produce circulating currents in the coils, which leads to sparking and flashover. Right now. Large rating DC machines. Large rating DC machines operating operating at high speeds operating at high speeds and varying load conditions and varying load conditions requires compensating winding essentially requires compensating winding essentially the varying load produced the varying load produced variations in armature flux Variations in armature flux, which links, which links to the same armature conductors, which links with the same armature conductors, and produces, and produces statically induced EMF and produces statically induced EMF. This leads to, this leads to circulating currents, and sparking at the pressures. And sparking at the pressures. Due to high speeds, due to high speeds, it results in a flash over. It results in a flash over. You know, according to Faraday, listen, there are two types of induced EMFs. One is dynamically induced EMF, other one is <laughs> statically induced EMF. In the basic EMF, uh, in the basic star, uh, Faraday's law, whenever a conductor comes in flux, a dynamically induced EMF, cutting of flux. There, there is a dynamic structure. Due to rotation of flux or conductor, the EMF induced means it is known as dynamically or speed EMF or rotationally induced EMF. But when it comes to a transformer, it is statically induced EMF. Here also, it is like a statically induced EMF. What is a flux? Flux is varying. It is linking with the conductors. Armature flux and armature are stationary, yes or no? Armature flux and armature are stationary, yes or no? You can't say armature is rotating, armature flux is stationary. If armature is rotating, armature flux is also rotating. Means both are stationary with respect to each other. Is the point clear or not? Armature is rotating means armature flux is also rotating. Armature flux and armature are stationary with respect to each other. So stationary EMF induced. What is that? Statically or dynamically? Statically induced EMF. So there exists the root problem. So this induced EMF will produce sparking and the spark will spread automatically produces a flashover. So in such machines you have to keep compensating winding. So for small machines it is a very costly effort. You can't do compensating winding, definitely for small machines, because the cost will increase. What is compensating winding means? The pole shoe is cut out into teeth, into slots again, and the winding is embedded in the pole shoe, inserted in the pole shoe, and that winding is connected in series with the armature. How to connect in series with the armature means again through pressures only. Armature is rotating, poles are stationary. So how to interface these two means again through pressures. But while connecting the connection series only, we have to take care of one thing that is under a North Pole, 
you know always the R major flux is clockwise, then you make compensating winding conductors, you place the compensating winding conductors in such a way that the current flows in them is exactly opposite to that of the current flowing in R major winding under the pole. Means, if this is crossed, you make it dot. Then, if the current is flowing in this manner, what is the R major flux? Clockwise. If the current is flowing in this manner, the R major flux is clockwise. If the compensating winding has dot rotation, then how is the flux due to compensating winding? Anti-clockwise. What will the clockwise and anti-clockwise fluxes will do? They will get neutralized. So what happens to the R major flux under the pool? It will get neutralized by the compensating winding. So you have to maintain the opposite rotation in the compensating winding exactly under that particular thing. So how they are corrected means again through pressures from the So if the current is flowing like this, you connect at that end so that the current will come out like this. So this produces clockwise flux, this produces anti-clockwise flux, we will collide each other. Similarly, what should be the conductor rotation in the under the south pole? Close. Which is exactly close. So if the current is coming out under the south pole, you will have anti-clockwise flux. So you produce the clockwise flux here, the compensating winding. So this is connected like this. So automatically the compensating current is flowing like this. So Compensative winding you can write a compensative winding is placed in the pole shoe. Compensative winding is placed in the pole shoe which is also slotted which is also slotted it is always connected in series it is always connected in series with the armature through brushes brushes in order to have in order to have automatic neutralization in order to have automatic neutralization of R major flux in order to have automatic neutralization of R major flux Listen, what is automatic neutralization mean? Let there be no load. What is armature flux? Zero. What is the flux of compensating winding? What is the flux out of compensating winding? Zero. Why? Because you connected armature and compensating winding in series, current is flowing. So, both currents are proportional to each other, and since they are in series, Therefore, as they are proportional to each other, if this current increases, this current also increases. This clockwise flux increases, anti-clockwise flux also increases. 
if clockwise flux decreases anti clockwise flux also decreases so what is this neutralization is it automatic or not once if you fix for correct number of conductors and if you design the machine if you leave it at any load at any point any condition automatically both the fluxes will cancel that is what is known as automatic neutralization now the concept is design of compensating winding means you can't simply place four or five conductors whatever you require in this it should follow some criteria what is the criteria means the idea of placing compensating winding under this board is to exactly nullify this flux first we will do one thing we will calculate what is the total armature flux we will calculate what is the total armature flux is the armature flux distributed uniformly or not is it concentrated on any part of the armature no armature flux is uniformly distributed throughout the armature peripheral because armature conductors are distributed throughout the armature the first thing we have written that only the armature flux is distributed uniformly throughout the peripheral so let us first calculate what is the total armature flux then let us consider there is one Weber armature flux on the entire armature distributed uniformly then this one Weber flux should be nullified by poles by poles if there are two poles this pole should nullify 0.5 hours this pole should nullify 0.5 hours if there are four poles each pole should nullify 0 0.25, 0 0.25 means you are assigning this job to all the poles. You are distributing all the armature flux on all the machine for all the poles. So, let us consider the first order of load. The direction of current flowing, the direction of current flowing in the compensative winding in the compensative winding in any pole shoe. should be exactly opposite to should be exactly opposite to the current direction the current direction in the armature conductors in the armature conductors under that pole under that pole that should be the design then only they will get automatically cancel out now let us consider there are zc compensating winding conductors the requirement of composite let us say there are zc number so these zc compensating winding conductors what is the current flowing in them since it is connected in series, what should be the current flowing in the compensating winding? It is IA. Remember, compensating winding is outside. If you make a machine like this, how is the compensating winding connected? After the brush. So you can think like this. This is the compensating winding. You are writing compensating winding is connected in series with the armature. It doesn't mean that you are taking the compensating winding inside the armature. It is through brush. So what is the current flowing in the compensating winding? IA. What is the current flowing in these conductors? IA by A. Remember that. The current flowing in these conductors is IA by A. The current flowing in these conductors is IA. So what you want to do exactly? Nullify the armature flux with the compensating winding flux. You want to exactly nullify them. If one member is armature flux, you should produce one member compensating winding flux. 
already you are making a design like that, already you have written a note there. What is that? Both are opposite. So both should be equal and opposite. So exact nullification comes. That's why let Zc be the composite winding conductors. Zc into IAA should be exactly equal to how many turns are there on the armature? Z by 2. So since you have taken conductors here, here also you take turns only. Both will get cancelled. Take turns or take conductors on both sides. Is the point clear? Take turns or conductors. If Zc compensating by any conductors, Zc by 2 turns. Anyway, both gets cancelled. Is the point clear? So, you can take anything. Zc by 2 compensating by any conductors is equal to if there are total conductors in the armature Z, what is the current flowing in them? Ia by A. What is this expression telling you? You have calculated total armature ampere turns. Can we say that? You have calculated total armature ampere turns. That is total armature flux and you are exactly making it equal to compensating winding conductors. So, if these are compensating winding conductors, the current going. So, compensating winding flux should be exactly equal to armature flux. Can we say that? So, flux is at the front end means what is there at the back end? Ampere turns. So, armature flux represented like this. Compensating winding flux represented by its ampere terms. So, what is Zc now? Z by A. The total compensating winding conductors required in the machine is nothing but number of armature conductors by number of parallel paths. Now, what you have to do? You have to arrange all these compensating winding conductors on each pole. So, if there are two poles in a machine, what you will do? You will divide this into two parts. You will keep each part in each pole. If you have four poles, all this will be divided into four parts. If you have three poles, what you will do? Right now. All the total armature flux all the total armature flux is to be nullified is to be nullified by placing compensating winding by placing compensating winding on each pole each pole. Therefore, compensating winding conductors required compensating winding conductors required on each pole face on each pole face equal to Z by a into B. Armature. But you can place compensating winding only under a pole. You can't place between the poles. Yes or no? I am repeating again. You have calculated 
the armature flux throughout the armature. And you are thinking that to compensate everything is right. You can compensate the armature flux only at the pole, but you can't compensate the armature flux between the poles because you can't keep compensating winding here. Yes or no? In this region, you can't place a compensating winding. There is no pole here. Even if you think of four pole machine, between a pole and pole, definitely there is a cap. In that cap, you can't place compensating winding. So what you did, you have calculated additional thing actually. So in order to accurately calculate, we require a factor known as pole arc by pole pitch factor. such a way that this pole will extend up to this point, this pole exactly touch this point, yes or no? If you want to design pole arc equal to pole pitch, think, not practically, theoretically. If you design the pole shoe up to this point, and if you design the pole shoe up to this point, they should contact, then only you can say pole arc equal to pole pitch, yes or no? Because this is pole arc. And what is pole pitch? This point to this point is pole pitch. Here also, this pole and this pole should contact. Then only you can say pole arc equal to pole pitch. Never in a machine it will be like that. Those poles will not contact, the pole arc will not be equal to pole pitch. This is a region of sensitive region where the pressures are placed. What is this region actually? What is this region between a pressure uh, between a pole and pole? What is this region? MLA. This is a sensitive region where the pressures are collecting current. Generally, the manufacturer value, this is the designer value. Generally, the manufacturer value is 0.7. Means the pole will span its pole pitch to around 70%. Listen. 
here you have calculated all the armature conductors or all the armature plugs on the armature to compensate only in this region. You can only compensate in this region only. You cannot compensate the armature plugs in this region as well as in this region because the poles are spanning only this area. So, what you should calculate? You should calculate only the armature plus in this region. You should calculate only the armature plus in this region. Yes or no? And you have to equate it to compensating winding ambiators. Generally, you have calculated Zc is equal to Z by A into P. What is the Z by A into P? All the region. So, you, are, you can't place compensating winding in this place, in this place. Therefore, some percentage should be reduced. You have over calculated. You have to calculate only in this region, in this region. What is this region representing exactly? Polar by voltage. That's why. Now, to get accurate value, compensated winding conductor's requirement is equal to Z by A into B into polar. <laughs> by voltage. It may be 0.7 or it may be 0.8, it may be 0 0.75, that depends on the problem. In alternators, listen, in alternators, while you write EM of equation, what's the problem? What? One person stands up and can be correctly. <laughs> In alternators, when you write EMF equation, <laughs> the EMF in you, E phase is I is just is equal to B. This is what we write. In DC generators, you are writing EG minus IA R A is equal to B. You are not considering any sort of impedance in a DC generator but you are considering all sorts of impedance in AC generator. What is the reason? What is the reason for that? If you say it is AC generator, if it is DC generator, in both machines the induced EMF is AC only. AC generator or DC generator, the induced EMF is AC. DC generator minus commutator becomes AC generator, right? So, in both the machines, the induced EMF is AC. You are considering impedance here, you are not considering that here. Well, that means the inductance effect is not considered here, here you are uh, not considered, here you are considering. If you ask what the reason, then, according to polar by Polvich, the waveform shape is a flat top waveform. In a DC generator, the waveform shape you are getting is when the conductor cuts like this, when it goes in the 1 mm A gap, the flux distribution under the pole and on the armature, if you draw, the flux distribution is a trapezoidal or flat top shape. Why it is a flat top shape means 
from this point to this point of around 70 percent and from the pole shoe and of the arm nature there is a uniform area of 270 percent so you will get a flat top shape here is over clear but in alternators you are not doing this in alternators you want to get your sinusoidal reform so when it comes to flat top shape for 70 percent is there any di by dt is there any variation no when there is no di by dt then you can neglect 70 percent of inductance i'm not telling inductance effect is zero in these machines there will be some inductance effect at the points but definitely not like AC generator, 70 percent it is neglected. Why? Because at least 70 percent there will be pull up by voltage factor. So there is a flat top to one, so automatically this is the voltage. Now if you say this is the induced EMF AC, after the brush what happens, after the commutation what happens? The negative cycle also becomes positive cycle. So this is for one coil. This is for one coil. So let us say this is one coil induced EMF. After this, next comes the other coil. This will move up after a slot angle of 30 or 15 or 20 degrees. After this, electrical degrees. After this, next coil will occupy. When the next coil occupies, let us say, this is the voltage. The next coil occupies, this is the voltage of that. Next coil occupies, this is the voltage of that. So what is the total voltage now? You will get a better DC before. As even though it is AC in the machine, when it is induced, as the waveform is a flat top structure, you are neglecting impedance effect, you are neglecting reactance effect. That's the reason. So why it is 70% flat top remains because of polar by volt which is 0.7. In a machine, if a manufacturer tells my polar by volt which is 0.8, then automatically the waveform becomes 80% flat top. Right? 80% flat top. Even 50% means pole arc by pole which is 0.5 is enough to make a pure DC waveform. Yes or no? Just think about 50%. So if the, this is like this, only 50%. Then also immediately one coil comes. Then also immediately one coil comes. Like that also you will get. Generally the manufacturer value is 0.7. But in problems you will be given 0 0.6, you will be given 0 0.8, 0 0.85 like that. It depends on the problem. Data. Commutating time 
PC, which is very short period, means very less time, which is in the order of 1 by 500 per second. Very small time. Just imagine, oils are passing by a brush. How much time it requires for a coil to pass a brush? Very small time, right? So, that time is TC. And if the current completely reverses, if the current completely reverses, within the commutating time, within the commutating time, then the commutation is, then the commutation is successful. Called as linear or ideal or straight line commutation. Also called as linear, ideal, or straight line commutation. All are same successful commutation. Reverses. If the current doesn't reverses within commutating time, within commutating time completely, then it produces sparking at the brush. It produces sparking at the brush. And the computation is not successful. And the computation is not successful. <coughs> Make you understand what is it exactly, what is this computation, why the spark comes into picture. I'll take the help of my diagrams actually. You know, inside the coils, let us consider this is one coil in series with the other coil, in series with the other coil. These are the armature coils inside. How they are connected in series through, through commutator segments only, right? So let us consider. there is a brush here and if there is a brush here so let us say the load is demanding 40 amperes the load is demanding some 40 amperes so through this path how much come 20 and through this path it will come around 20 right so finally 40 amperes are coming like this now the brush is in contact with segment 2, so it is, the load is connected here, it is asking 40 amperes, so
So all the 40 avenues will come through this, not by any other. Why? Because it is in contact here. So this is the press position, demand taking the current. So automatically through this path, how many avenues comes? 20. And through this path, 20. You understand this diagram? Now, the armature is rotating, pressures are stationary. Armature is rotating, pressures are stationary. So, in the next instant, if you observe, next instant, if you observe, pressure is like that only, but the commutator as well as the armature which is rotating will move like this. So let us take an instant like this. The brush which is stationary will lose some contact with segment 2 and consequently gain the same contact with segment 1. Can we say that? Since the brush is stationary, as the coil is moving, as the segment is moving, when this moves like this, when this moves like this, brush is stationary, so the brush will lose contact with segment 2, consequently gains contact with segment 1. So the next diagram is that. segment 2, definitely it can't collect the same current. For example, why the current is not coming through this path means the brush is not in contact with this, right? Similarly, when the brush loses some contact, the current collected through the brush through this segment depends on brush contact area. If there is no contact with the brush, automatically there is no current. If the contact is full, full current flows through it. So finally we can say one thing. The current flowing through the brush depends on the brush contact area. In the first diagram, to segment 2, all the contact is there with the brush. So all the current flows through that. Now let us take the next instant where the brush is losing 25% contact in segment 2 and consequently gaining the same 25% contact in segment 1. Therefore, out of 40 amperes, the contact area is 75 percent here, the contact area is 25 percent here. So, out of 40 amperes, 75 percent, how much? 30. And through this, 10. Through this contact, it will flow 10, and through this, it will flow 30. What is the total? 40. Now, inside the coils, this is. 20. Previously, here 10, 20 is coming, right? But now how much? 10. And to this, if it is 20, 10 like this, 10 like this. Up to the right now. Next instant.
कितना परसेंट तक है ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ये ट्वेंटी फाइव Now in the next instant, let us assume like this: the brush is losing 50% contact with segment two. Consequently, it is gaining 50% contact with segment one. So, out of 40 amperes, 50% 20, 50%. So, what is the current in this particular coil? Minus 10 and finally it becomes minus 20. चालीस एम पी निकलेगा ना क्या है कुछ लूजिंग लूजिंग सम कॉन्टैक्ट फ्रॉम टू एम चीज है
If the brush is in direct contact with segment 2, all the brush contact area is with segment 2. So all the current goes through this. Now, as this moves on, the brush is stationary, it will lose contact. Automatically, when it is losing contact, it is gaining contact. Now the current has to pass through. When it is flowing into the brush, then the current in this particular coil under brain commutation is changing. How much it is changing from plus 20, it became 10. After that, 0. After that, minus 10. Finally, minus 20. From plus i to minus i, the current is changing at the point. So what is the total change in current? 40 amperes or 2i. Can we say that? 2i. So if the entire change in current happens, Within the commutating time TC, we we'll just think of the time, the brush coming from this segment to this segment. How much time it require? Just the brush coming from this point to this point. So in five diagrams, you also that only. The brush which is in contact segment 2 is losing the contact segment 2 and gaining the contact segment 1. Just coming from this point to this point. So the time is very, very short time. Within that time, if the current completely changes in the coil, the combination is successful. In this diagram, you will find that only. In all these five diagrams, when the brush comes from 2 to 1, finally, within that time, the current in the coil is changing from 20, 10, 0, minus 10, and minus 20. This is theoretical thing, but practical thing. As this coil poses some inductance, this is a basically coil, right? So, what is happening to the current in the coil? Is it changing or same current? The current is changing. So when the current changes automatically, this flux around the conductor will change and automatically this coil will possess some inductance property. So what is inductance property? What is it doing? It will not allow sudden change in current, right? The same thing it will do here. It will not allow the change in current completely 
within commutating time. So by the end of commutating time, there will be some unchanged current within the coil which produces some spark. What is that means? Theoretically, the fifth diagram is correct. If the fifth diagram is like this, the combination is successful. But practically, what is happening means the coil undergoing commutation will not allow the current to change completely within the commutating time. is allowing only around 35 amperes. Let us think like this. It is allowing only 35 amperes to change through it because of the self inductance property. Some current is not able to change completely. So let us say 5 amperes is the unchanged current not able to change because the coil undergoing commutation is not allowing the change in current. It is allowing only 35 amperes. It is not allowing 5 amperes to change, think like that, then what will be the diagram now? At the end, that last diagram, if it is 20, 40 amperes, total change. If it is not 40, if it is 35, then what should be the current there? 15. It should be only 15. It is allowing only 15 to change, it is not allowing 5 to change, 5 to come through it completely. Then, what should be the current here? 25. And the 5 amperes which is unchanged current will not go back. That 5 amperes unchanged current will jump into the brush because up to the previous microsecond time, this brush is in contact with segment 2. Yes or no? See the last diagram, it is in contact with segment 2. But when it loses the contact with segment 2, by taking the advantage of the contact, since this is not allowing, that 5 ampere current will jump into the brush through sparking. Is the point clear? Now, this is 5 amperes spark. Let us say, if you name the brush tip also as, when it is moving like this machine, this is leading tip of the brush and this is trailing tip of the brush, depending on the rotation again. Let us say rotation is like this. So this is leading tip, this is trailing tip. So automatically across the trailing tip of the brush there exists a spark. Why is this spark coming means the coil is not allowing the current to change completely through it. That is what you have written on the top. If the current completely changes within the commutative time then the commutation is successful. If not, unsuccessful spark comes into picture. By the end of the commutating time, in this part, only the current has been changed to minus 15. So at the end of that time, in this instant, it will jump converted into minus 20 as a spark. So that is not linear. If it occurs in a straight line, linear. If it is not like that, it becomes non linear.
ahead. At the practical conditions, at the practical conditions, the foil undergoing competition, the foil undergoing competition contains self inductance property. Coil undergoing commutation contains self inductance property. Which doesn't allow, which doesn't allow the complete change in current. The complete change in current within the commutating time, within the commutating time, consequently, consequently, the unchanged current. will jump into the brush will jump into the brush through sparking across trailing tip of the brush across trailing tip of the brush means you are particularly asked at which tip you are getting the spark if you say this is the machine running in the clockwise direction, then the first tip is leading, next tip is railing. Now listen, here there is a simple logic here. In order to improve computation, the first problem is the coil undergoing computation is not allowing the change in current. Right? Now, if you write E is equal to N D phi by D T, Already we have discussed this, that means E is equal to L D I by D D, both are same, right? Now here, in the coil undergoing computation, there is a rate of change of current, that's all. There is rate of change of current. So automatically there is rate of change of flux, which links with the coil and what it will do it is making the coil to become inductive in nature, but it is producing self-induced EMF. That's all. Right. If you say E is equal to LDA by the end of it, it is producing some voltage. That voltage is known as reactance voltage. If you see, the coil undergoing combination will contain some inductance property. If you say L self is the inductance property, inductance of the coil, what is the change in current di? If you say, let us say, from plus side to minus side it is changing, what is the total change in current from plus side to minus side? 2i. So di is nothing but 2i, dt is nothing but dc. What is I means? I is nothing but I A by A only. What is the current in the coil? What is the current in the turn or coil or conductor? I A by A. I A by A only generalize I A. Generalize it as I. So then, the reactance voltage in the coil undergoing commutation due to variation in the current, you can write as self inductance of the coil into 2I by TC. TC is counted in time, IE is IA by A. According to Lenz law. Once listen, simple logic is that we know. According to Lenz law, the resultant will always oppose its cos. So, resultant is ER. What is the cause for that? Change in current. And we said change in current. 
So change in current is there here. So the reactance voltage in the coil is not allowing the current to change in the coil. Can we say that? According to Lin's law, they are opposing each other. This is the resultant, this is the cause. What is the cause? In that you can find di by dt. There is a change in current with respect to time. The change in current is being opposed by the reactance voltage. Now you oppose this reactance voltage, then the change in current will be successful. Yes or no? I'm repeating again. The change in current is being opposed by the reactance voltage. Right? According to Lin's law, this is the resultant, this is the resultant, this is the cause for that. So this cause is being opposed by this. What is this? Change in current. Change in current is being opposed by the reactance voltage. Now, you oppose the reactance voltage. You nullify the reactance voltage. Then automatically, the opposition to the change in current is being nullified. That's the idea. Right on. There will be a self-induced EMF. There will be there will be self-induced EMF in the coil undergoing commutation. There will be self-induced EMF in the coil undergoing commutation, known as reactance voltage. known as reactance voltage according to Lin's law according to Lin's law the resultant opposes its cause The resultant opposes its cause. What is the resultant? Reactance voltage. What is the cause for that? Change in current. Change in current. So change in current is opposed by the reactance voltage. That's why it couldn't change in the coil. Yes or no? The change in current is being opposed. That's why the change is not complete. What you have to do now to improve computation, you have to make the change in current in the coil to be successful. Then you just oppose this opposition. If you oppose this opposition, automatically the change in current becomes successful. Better. According to Lin's law, what do you write? It's cause. The reactance voltage. Pending. The reactance voltage. The reactance voltage is opposing. Is opposing the change in current. The change in current in the commutation in the coil change in current in the coil undergoing commutation in the coil undergoing commutation this reactance voltage need to be this reactance voltage need to be nullified This reactance voltage need to be nullified to improve commutation.
methods to improve competition. carbon brush improves competition. Listen, you can use the brush materials like copper, carbon and carbon. <coughs> copper brushes are having very low resistance, high conductivity, less brush contact problem very good material. When it is compared to carbon brush, carbon brushes have comparatively more resistance than copper. Now, graphite brushes are also used for very high rating machines, but generally all the machines contain carbon brushes to improve competition. Now, we are discussing between copper and carbon brushes. <coughs> copper brushes have low resistance, carbon brushes have comparatively high resistance. Why you are preferring high resistance carbon brush even though it will produce approximately 2 volts brush contact drop, this will produce only 1 volt brush contact drop, total I am telling, 2 brushes 0 0.5, 0 0.5, this is 1 volt per brush, so this is more voltage drop, brush contact drop, why means, this brush when it is collecting current, any unchanged current is there means that unchanged current can only flow through two paths. One path is through the coil, other path is through the air into brush. Only two paths. There is a load which is demanding 40 amperes and that 40 amperes is coming, is collected through the brush. When it is collected through the brush, it has two paths. One path is through the coil, other path is through the old path and through the air through the spark. Now, if this coil self-inductance property is opposing the change in current, automatically the current has only one path to flow that is through this. Now, you make the resistance of the brush increase it. Increasing this resistance of the brush will definitely discourage the spark in this particular region. If the resistance of the brush is too low, low resistance means it will simply encourage the spark. If the resistance of the brush is high, automatically it may dominate. This spark resistance may dominate the inductance property of the coil. That's all. You increase the resistance of the brush in such a way that the inductance property of the coil will be dominated. Automatically, any unchanged current will be forced to flow through the coil itself. 
because it can't flow through this of high resistance, it is forced to flow through the coil. When it is forced to flow through the coil, automatically competition is improved because there is no sparks. So, than a low resistance copper brush, high resistance carbon brush will definitely improve competition. That is one advantage. <coughs> Apart from that, copper material is very hard. Copper material itself is very hard. But carbon brush is smooth in nature, self-polishing in nature. Means, continuously when the competitor is running at a peripheral, high peripheral speed, the surface of carbon is self-polishing. Means, generally you will do some grease or all those things in the bearings, right? To, in order to reduce the friction, oil at least. Why you will do? The surface should be as smooth or as less friction as possible. Due to the carbon material, when it is running, the surface becomes self-polishing in nature, so smooth and offers less friction. So when it offers good mechanical properties, when it offers good mechanical conditions, definitely sparking will not be there. So that copper carbon brushes are more advantageous when it comes to sparking. One more advantage is, when any spark comes, the copper brush gets more damaged than carbon. Carbon is more robust, more reliable. When any spark comes, copper gets easily damaged than carbon. But the disadvantage is, you require large carbon brush because the current densities are less. The density, current density, for example, density means what? If you require this much of size for 5 amperes, if current density is more, you require less size only, right? If the density is more, automatically the size requirement becomes less. So current density of carbon is more than the, current density of copper is more than the carbon. So the disadvantage is carbon pressure should be more size compared to copper. That's the only disadvantage. Right. Due to the increased brush resistance, due to the increased brush resistance, it will not encourage sparking. It will not encourage sparking. And any unchanged current will be, any unchanged current will be, forced to flow through, will be forced to flow through the coil itself, flow through the coil itself. Carbon brushes have added advantages like, carbon brushes have added advantages like number one they are smooth and self polishing in nature and self polishing in nature Number two, they damage less than copper brush. They damage less than the copper brush when spark occurs. They damage less than copper brush when spark occurs. But the drawback is, but the drawback is due to low current density, due to low current density, which requires increase the size of the brush.
increased size in the brush and brush holders. It also produced more brush contact problems. also produce more brush contact rock than copper. More brush contact rock than copper. So you can take like this. For copper brush, <coughs> one volt total brush contact rock. For carbon, it will be more than that, two volts. Now, one more thing here is The increased resistance in the brush will not affect the current which is collected in this part. I'm repeating. The increased resistance in the brush will not affect the current flowing in this part. You are not replacing copper brush with wood or plastic. You are just replacing with slightly more resistance copper brush which can collect. The reason is why it won't come like that? Don't think that the current is also opposed by this brush, where it will go. If you observe the trailing pole tip and the leading pole tip region, under the trailing pole tip region, the brush contact area is diminishing in nature, is decreasing in nature. Under the leading pole tip region, the brush contact area is increasing in nature. Just think about that. See, don't think in this region the current can't be collected. You can easily collect it. Why? Because in this region the brush contact area is increasing. So current can be easily collected in this region. But the problem is with this region. Actually, in this region contact area is decreasing. So increase in the resistance will affect this part than this region. So don't think this current is not getting allowed into that. It is not that. By increasing the resistance, you are making forcibly to flow the current into the coil and to current in this side, where the brush contact area is simply increasing in nature. Keep that voltage communication. Additional demagnetization. Due to pressure, what is the additional 
deep magnetization. That is what you know. But apart from that, one more thing. You can shift the brush while designing itself to some angle theta. And you can fix the design, you can fix the machine, and you can operate that machine for that particular condition only. You can't keep on changing the brush position when the machine is designed once. And even when it is running, when it is operating, under operating conditions of, you can't simply shift the brush on the comp data. Brushes are placed in a particular location and you will shift to the comp, uh, based on that angle, you will shift and you will design the machine. Let us say, the machine is on low load. Then, how is MNT in the machine? It will just coincide with GLA, right? MNT is coinciding with GNA. Now, let us say there is some load in the machine. So a small armature flux will produce cross magnetization to some extent. As the armature current further increase, what happens to cross magnetization? It increases. As the armature current further further increases automatically, the cross magnetization means the flux armature flux is increasing here, here also increasing. So more cross magnetization. So, shifting of MNA or theta directly proportional to load current. That's all. Right. Shifting of MNA or theta is not a fixed value. Theta means this MNA which shifts in the direction of rotation of generator depends significantly on load. That's all. Right. If there is no load, MNA will not shift means imaginary axis is here only. But as the load increases, as the cross magnetization increases, automatically MNA is shifting. So the shifting of MNA between 0 and theta depends on which condition? Load condition. You can make the brush to shift for a full load condition and you can keep it here. At full load, that will be the average of this is the brush position. But when you operate this machine at half load, is that reliable? When you operate the machine at half load, definitely MNA is not at this point. MNA is somewhere here. But where are the brushes? Here. So definitely there will be some pass parking. So if you fix the brush for half load, if you make the machine for full load, again there will be spark. Finally, brush shifting is not at all a reliable method. There is no automatic neutralization like compensative compensated winding. That's all. Okay. Compensative winding, if there is no load, no compensative winding flux. If there is full load, full compensative winding flux, there exists automatic neutralization of armature flux. But here, there is no automatic neutralization. You can fix the brush position to one load condition and you have to operate the machine to that load only. But that's not the physical thing that happens. The load on the machine will vary according to the time before the application. Therefore, the brush shifting is not at all a reliable method. Even though if you can shift the brush to a particular position, even though if you load the machine to that load condition, there is one disadvantage that is additional demagnetization. That's why it has been totally replaced with interpoles. Right now. It is not a reliable method. It is not a reliable method. As the shifting of MNA, as the shifting of MNA from GLA, as the shifting of MNA from GNA depends on load, the brushes cannot be shifted. The brushes cannot be shifted. continuously according to load conditions. Continuously according to load conditions. Once they are designed for a particular once they are designed for a particular load However, 
there is additional demagnetization. However, there is additional demagnetization. Due to brush shifting. <laughs> Due to brush shifting. is a topic which can't be discussed at this time.